second talk now. It's my time and it's about breakfast, picnicking, lunching, everything about eating. No, it's about post-quantum cryptography, um, made as simple as I could by picturing you all the way through the presentation. Um, and I start with uh, what would a picnic be for computer science guys without bugs? Uh, there had been a lot of bugs and we want to get rid of them, so how can we do that? No, it's not about getting, really getting rid of bugs. It's about what is PICNIC, and PICNIC is a digital signature scheme um, said to be post-quantum secure. And today I want to talk you through what the motivation for me choosing PICNIC was, what our cause does. Um, then we go through PICNIC in a nutshell, as I proposed, mainly pictures. Um, and what did I do in this scenario? And then the future, because after each project is before the next project. So first, our cause. I think you all know what we're doing here, but that sweet recap. Um, we met about learning about post-quantum post cryptography. And oh, maybe I should use this side of the monitor. People can see me on the video. Um, each of us was allowed to choose a topic on our own mainly. That was quite nice. Then we all banged our heads against it, do math, implement it, write stuff, contribute like Harold did, contribute to the open source community or stuff like that, or contribute today to tell all the others and what we did. That is tell your mates about that. Do good things and talk about it. And additionally, we get some credit point rewards. Wow, wow, cool. But uh, for me, <laughs> perhaps, maybe. Yeah. Um, so that was for me, let's go picnic. What is picnic? I said it's a signature scheme. Harald also uh, told us about a picnic, uh, about a signature scheme today. Um, that was my overview about what this picnic signature scheme would look like and what parts of have I to learn in, in this semester to slowly get a grip of it. And that was the start. I presented that last year to you. And then I discovered, oh, there's just a lot of stuff in the middle hanging below this low MC uh, node. And then if I get into low MC, that one is used here again and I could draw a lot of uh, arrows in, the, in there because there is a lot of uh, arrows and all, everything is depending to everything, everything is connected to everything. So let's try to figure out how I can tell you a little more about this very detailed and complex thing. So inside a nutshell, um, we will look through what is a Sigma protocol. We'll have a small example, the most known example of a zero knowledge protocol called the cave or Alibaba's cave. Then uh, low MC is a block cipher and we need it as a hard to reverse function. Then we have to look into what is multi-party computation, MPC. After we got a glimpse of that, we have to fold that together to put it in the head not only in our head, but in the head of a computer, a single computer. And then we slowly get to finish that up with the picnic loops and how that signature arises from all that and how we can verify that. So we have our lovely Alice and we have our lovely Bob and we, they both communicate in a way we call the Sigma protocol. That's quite easy. It's three messages. It starts with a commit message and then comes a challenge. And after the challenge, there gets a response. And that's the whole Sigma protocol. That's an easy example. If you want to look that up is the Schnorr protocol. You can find it on Wikipedia. It's about a group, uh, a cyclic group and it's fancy, but not that hard to read. I don't do that now because we have a lot of stuff to go through. So keep that in mind. And why is it named Sigma protocol? Because it kind of looks like a big Sigma. Hmm? Um, zero knowledge proofs. 
are based on Sigma, Sigma protocols. And this is the most easy example of what is the zero knowledge proof. We start with a commitment. We have Alice and we have Bob. Alice goes inside a cave and inside that cave there are two ways, one up and one down. We call them A and B. And from the outside, Bob is looking that Alice is going inside this cave, but he stands outside. He doesn't see where Alice is going. That barely, but he doesn't see, that's the example. So Alice decides if she goes to A or B. What is the purpose of all this? The purpose is that Alice wants to convince Bob, hey Bob, I have a secret, and Bob shall be convinced to believe that she has that secret, and the zero knowledge part of it is Bob should not get any information about that secret in the communication. The communication should not contain any part of the secret. That is the zero knowledge, zero knowledge of the secret in the communication. And this is the first part. They commit to the riddle. And the riddle is this thing here. This is a door. And this door can only be opened with a key. Imagine it like a secret key in public key cryptography. So Alice says, hey, I know a secret, which means she has the key to that door, and she can open it, and now we're using that. So the commitment is this scenario, Alice goes into that, <laughs> I wanted to say rabbit hole, just a cave, <laughs> sorry, <coughs> and decides if she goes to A or B, and she decided to go to B. Now Bob follows after her and gives her a challenge and says, hey Alice, I don't know which way you went, but please come out of the cave at A or come out of the cave at B. And now you see the problem, Alice can go directly out of B because she chose to go to B. That is easy, she, she doesn't need a secret for that. But if he asks her to get out of A, a come out of this side of the cave. She has a problem if she doesn't have the secret, namely the key, because she can't go through that door without the secret. That is a challenge. Bob challenges Alice. Alice said, oh, wow, I have the key, and I can go through that door so I can get out at A. And Bob see, sees Alice coming out at A. What happened, and what could have happened? First, Alice couldn't go through, through A if she didn't know the secret. That's a part. So, what has happened? Alice convinced Bob of her knowing a secret because she got out at A. <coughs> there was a cheating probability. If Alice had gone the other way to A, she didn't need the secret. So, so she could get out at A without having the secret. So there was a cheating probability of 50%. So what shall we do? Let's play that more times. Let's play that n times. And what happens then is each time there is a cheating probability of 50%. So 50, um, oh. uh, 50 to n um, is our new, new cheating probability in regards to n. So, and that is the main thing of zero knowledge based proofs. They are probability proofs, so we have a probability of cheating. We repeat them over and over. And the main thing is Bob didn't, Bob didn't um, learn anything about the key. He learned about which way Alice got out of the, of the cave, but not about anything about the key. That was not part of the transmission. That is solely her thing. That is the zero knowledge part of it. The key and the door had been a kind of hard to reverse function. We need a kind of hard re to reverse function inside that, um, mainly where you have a secret knowledge like a key and you can do that function like opening the door with it. And for a, full no for, a, for a silo knowledge proof, in our case, we need that function and therefore we take a block cipher. That block cipher is low MC, stands for low multiplicative, multipli low multiplicative complexity. 
So that algorithm tries to reduce the multiplications. That scheme here is a classical block cipher scheme. Um, you will find that in AES and DES and other uh, block ciphers. You have rounds to go and inside that rounds you have a substitution, you have some matrix multiplication, you have some XORing with round keys. That's always the same in, in most of the block ciphers and this doesn't look different from that. Um, I want to reduce this low MC to the facts why, uh, why it is used and not AES or DES or any other in our picnic scheme. Uh, first, it's only a block cipher, don't fear. And this one is the called nonlinear layer, and this one is called the linear layer. Why do we need a nonlinear layer? Because if that would not be in and all would be a linear layer, we can all put that in a big matrix and calculate it in every way we want it. It would not any kind of hard to reverse. So um, low multiplication and multiplication in the Galois field too is um, is mainly uh, the, the non-linear part and low means they try to keep this part as small as possible. That is the, great, uh, the bigger picture of low MC. Multiplication in Galois field 2, keep it low, low multiplication. So that's it. And we use that for, for picnic later on. We will see and I will point you out why that is important, the low multiplication. That is another idea of what low MC is. Low MC could be drawn as an electrical circuit. These are AND and XOR gates. And there is an input to it. There is an output of that circuit. And the whole thing is the low MC function. We can take that as a hard reverse function. And as we know from famous courses like complexity theory or stuff, um, it is a hard problem to define, for example, satisfiability. Yeah. And imagine that like you can't find a fitting input to a given output. I give you the output here and say this is a bunch of zeros and ones and now find, please find an input that creates this output and you will have a hard time to do that. I think this is the most complex and, and difficult uh, slide I put in, in my presentation and I will not go completely thr through that with you. That would consume too much time. What you can see, I will point out some, some things. What you can see is we have the classical scheme of the Sigma protocol. We have the commits, we have a challenge which shall be picked at, at random and we have responses. That's Sigma protocol. And on the, on the left side there's a prover in that case it was Alice going into the cave. On the other side there's a verifier, in that case it was Bob. And the prover wants to convince the verifier of, hey, I know a secret. That's just a little more complex than the cave example. There's an, another clue, another uh, thing that went into this, why it got a little complicated, is um, we have two players now. And I talked about we have to look into multiplayer computation. And that is the, where the multiplayers get involved. We share the secrets that Alice or any verifier have. We share that secret between more players. We do, like dividing the secret into shares of, let's, let's say A and, A and B are the secrets didn't write that down. A and B are the secrets and we share them into A1 for player 1 and A1 and B1 for player 1 and A2 and B2 for player 2. So they both have a share of the secret. That's quite important. And that share doesn't reveal anything about A or B, the secrets themselves. That is, the, that is the zero knowledge part. You see in the, communica in the, in the, yeah, the communication that what in the response got revealed from one player is the share of one player, not A or B, not the secrets itself. That is the zero knowledge part of it. What applies to this, as it applied to the cave example before, is we have to play that many, many, many rounds. 
because this does only convince for one player gets revealed. That's like Alice coming out of A or coming out of B. We play that with two players and one player gets revealed. A and B in the cave example before are now two players. And to make it a little more difficult in the real picnic, we don't have two players. We play that game with three players, so we don't have to share the secrets between two players, but we have to share them between three players. And there is another thing which uh, we don't want. This communication have, has to have two participants, the verifier and the prover. And a signature, I don't want to communicate with another participant. I want to do a signature on my own. I write a signature down and I don't want to communicate with anybody else about that. So how can we achieve that? We have to put this whole verifier thing inside this box and stuff it all together and we call that MPC in the head. It's like communicating in like a little lunatic, it seems, like communicating with myself about uh, a protocol I'm holding with myself. And the problem arises at the moment where he is, here is said, pick a random challenge. And that would be, if I play that game with myself and ha I have to pick a random challenge and I can pick it as I want, I would pick that one that favors me. Go back to the example with uh, the cave. In the cave I said, if Alice could pick which way she has to come out, she doesn't need a secret. She could always go out the way she went in. She doesn't have to, 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 to open the door. Uh, so if she could pick that random part, that challenge, that wouldn't be good. What can we do about that? We take a hash function. We move that stuff inside, inside to the verifier and say he can play that with, uh, with his side alone, he doesn't need a verifier, if he can create randomness which he can't foresee. That is the main trick. And he can't foresee randomness from a hash function where mainly the commitments he, do, he, he does at the start went into the hash function, create randomness, and he has randomness which he can't interfere with. Simple as that. Um, that is called a random oracle model and is quite normal for hash functions. Um, you can do the proof that this is zero knowledge and this, that this does work about that random oracle model. And to name it at that, at that point, there are two different ways in Picnic how to make this, how to make this work from the hash function to generate the, 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 the randomness on this side. Um, and one is random oracle model and the other one is quantum random oracle model. Um, they're just two different versions and the, the second one shall be more secure against quantum computer attacks. <coughs> now we're nearly done. This is the whole picnic thing. This is a schematic of the code of Picnic and you see um, as I got used to Python um, I, I in, indent uh, things for, for, for having loops. So from here to there this, all this thing is a big loop. It's the zero knowledge round loops. As I said zero knowledge has to be performed multiple times uh, for the cheating probability. This is the big loop, the MPC loops, multiplayer computation loops and inside that we have to play low MC as the hard to reverse function for three players. You see three lines going through the whole algorithm and that is for player one, player two, player three. So the low MC rounds here inside, the outside MPC rounds and three players means at the lowest security level we have 219 MPC rounds, we have 20 low MC rounds in the inner loop and that done by three times is quite a lot. Yeah. So each S box, each uh, linear layer, this, this one here inside is what I showed you about the block cipher. The non-linear layer and the following linear layers. And now we're slowly getting to the point why low MC is chosen. Because you see this one is calculated quite often these times. The signature that arises is the written transcript of all this communication. 
So there's a transcript of everything that happens inside here for every three players. And we write that down and have our signature. That's, that's the abstract thing to see. So you see the signatures can grow, they're big. And we want to transcript and record as less as we can. And they, they made a trick. They chose low MC because they only transcript the nonlinear parts. The linear parts are not that interesting. They can be easily reversed. The nonlinear parts, which are the S boxes, are quite the, the juicy part of, of low, low MC. So they only re record that. And they couldn't do that with AES. They could do that, but the, the, the nonlinear part, S boxes in AES, are quite more bigger than in low MC. So they choose a, a cipher where you can parameterize the count of the nonlinear parts and make them as small as possible that your transcript for the signature gets as small as possible. That is the whole idea in a nutshell. Verification, recalculate all the communication that got transcripted, mainly the signature, and now is the clue leave out two of the three players. I can't talk you through how that works, but the main idea is you get the full transcript, leave out some parts, recalculate it, and if it still fits, it's a valid verification of the signature. What did I do with all this, except from making some difficult to understand graphics, is Again, you heard that from Harald, uh, I did a Python implementation because I wanted to learn Python a little bit better than I got used to it, and it helped a lot. Um, what, I, what I realized in between is, uh, okay, Picnic has many parts of it, and there is a hash function called SHA-3. I took that as existent, I took that from a package, but low MC, I didn't find a Python package, so I wrote it myself. And if I, when I had that low MC Python, I could uh, go on to code Picnic. Then I made all that stuff public in my public GitHub. Contributions and stars are welcome. Uh, work with me. I think that today is the work with me thing. If we all, all would have, I know that from op other open source conferences, everybody standing at the stage and yells, I have a project, please contribute. And now I'm in the same level. I have a project, please contribute. And sure, some writing about documentation I did and holding presentations now and all that stuff. Um, is that the time for happy dance now? It could be, but not quite. After the project is before the project. So my whole studies, I did projects for credit points. And it was quite amazing if I re look on, on what I had in my studies and all the projects that got, um, how many there are. And it's not that amazing how many are in the basement now or forgotten or not nearly at the point where I wanted them to be. And finally, before uni kicks me out, uh, you're not a student anymore. Uh, here, you have your master. Please go now. Um, I, I'm starting to develop on another mindset. And I don't want to do that for my basement or for any part of my hard drive, which I will never never, never look on again. Um, so that means after the project is before the project, I want to maintain this Python implementation for a quite longer time. So after we sent all our stuff to you guys for giving us credit points, I didn't stop working on it. And it's a lot of fun, and I still coded on it till yesterday evening, 10 p.m. And I want, as Harold did it, to uh, get it to a state where it's a pip install package. Um, I'm new to using all the stuff Harold talked about, um, linter checks, tox, Sphinx documentation, all that stuff, clean code in Python. That is quite a task for one who has not done that intensely before. And one of the main problems with all that implementations I did is they're damn, damn slow. Oh, gosh. 
Those, the, the, a signature took about five minutes, four to five minutes, I think. And that was mainly uh, a problem of one class I took, which is called bit vector. Uh, it was said there's cool C implementations in Python down there inside, but it turned out it's damn slow. So what did I do? At the end of the project, uh, low MC tests, my tests at all security levels, three tests at each level, so nine tests, took about uh, one minute 15. Uh, a signature based on picnic was 400 seconds time. Um, that's not usable. You can't use that for anything. So I took the next two weeks and worked on it and I got that down to uh, a speed up of 200. Uh, that low MC and running below a half a second is quite good. And what I did yesterday, yesterday evening was to get that 400. I, I have to start with low MC, make that faster because low MC is the biggest part of, of, of picnic. And then I stuffed a little of that into the picnic stuff and as you see from 400 down to 40, 45 is quite good. My hopes are I will get a signature on the lowest signature level in, in some seconds. What I say that there are possible um, applications where you count one, two, three, four, five signature would be okay. Yeah? Some maybe. If I sign a document at my, at my bank counter or stuff, it would also take five seconds. So I don't have a problem with five seconds, I have a problem with 400 seconds. Yeah? Um, it's now pure Python, I removed that bit, bit vector package. Um, bit, what ex exciting for me was I d had to write a lot of tests, what goes fast, what goes slow in Python. And first I thought, like, like I, I'm used to programming C sometimes, and I would do that all with byte arrays. Byte arrays are in my memory, they're direct accessible, and if I want to do bit manipulation, I do that in C uh, directly on the memory on the, on the byte arrays. In Python, there's also byte arrays, but they're damn in inefficient if you want to do bit manipulation. Um, even taking, the, the, the best part is taking integers and really doing XORs on integers feels kind of weird at the start. But you get used to it. You get used to it, don't worry. And bit strings, I mean a string of ones and zeros, always see, all, also doesn't seem naturally <laughs> the fitting choice, but it is, it is quite efficient. And I have tests for that, I, I can show you that. So that is the thank you part, and I can show you. Um, just, to, just to show you that I, that I really made that uh, speed up. That was the first version where it took about more than one, one minute. These are the low security levels, level one, now there's uh, the pre-calculations for level three and there's a level five and it will go on after the while and it will take about that, what I said, 75 seconds around to get all my tests. Yeah? You see, that's, it's getting slower, it's getting way slower because the security level gets higher. So let me change to my, to my actual branch where the stuff is faster and now you have to fasten the seat belt, that's it. Yeah? Same. Same goes for this one. This is Picnic doing a signature. And as I mentioned, there are 219 rounds. And this is one round, this counts to 219. This takes 400 seconds. Yeah? I want to pause you, that is. Yeah? But again, it's already a. These damn pi pi and cache things. So, and now the tests, um, you see the rounds count way faster. Yeah. And after that, I didn't, I didn't implement, uh, 
I wanted to sleep that night, so I didn't implement the verification that fast. But as you see, 218, including the zero one, processing time now 15 seconds. That's it. <laughs>